For quite a while, I've been a fan of vertical style ITX cases. You get the same component compatibility as standard cases, but in a much smaller footprint. Well, Slager has recently launched their SV540, which is a compact ITX vertical case. And today we're gonna take a look. If you're not familiar with Slager, you definitely should be. I reviewed their case, the SM570, not too long ago, and I loved it. It's up on my wall as one of my favorite cases ever. They have a whole line of premium performance focused cases, most of which are for many ITX builders. So definitely check them out if you haven't seen them yet. But today we're gonna focus on the SV540, which is the smaller brother to the recently relaunched or upgraded SV590. Both cases are very similar with the 590 being slightly taller and offering up to 360 mil rad support, while the 540 is obviously a little shorter and offers up to 280 mil rad support. Like most Slager cases, there are some customization options. You can get the case in either white, gray, or black. You can also choose which side panels you want, either the slotted side panels, which look kind of cool, or the circular standard cutout, which I got here. You can also choose which type of PCI connector you like, whether you like a base plate and or a mount for a reservoir. Unlike most cases you see these days, particularly ITX cases, this case is actually made of steel and it's made in America, which is very different from what you typically see in the ITX sector. Coming in at 15.25 total liters, this is still a very compact case, especially when you consider that it is a vertical model. Style-wise, I really like the looks of the 540. It definitely has a more minimalist aesthetic, which for me is fantastic. The front panel wraps around the curved edges. Everything lines up super perfectly. There's no gaps or anything like that. And it just looks overall very clean, especially when sitting on top of a desk. In addition to the large radiator support, you can also fit fans or CPU blocks up to 55 millimeters. More on that later. You can also fit graphics cards up to 310 millimeters long and up to three slots. There are also three slots for mounting 2.5 inch SSDs. And if you want to go with a shorter graphics card, you can actually fit up to five 2.5 inch SSDs in this case. Both SFX and SFXL power supplies are supported, but I'd recommend sticking with SFX units because it gets very tight if you go with a larger model. Getting the side panels on and off is fairly simple. There's just four screws for each side panel and four additional screws for the front. If you wanna take that off, that will make the actual build process a lot easier. The internal layout of the case is pretty straightforward. This is a typical layout that you would see in a sandwich style case. You have the area here for your ITX motherboard, your SFX power supply, and then the backside, you can see this is where you can mount either a 240 or 280 mil radiator. Around the other side, this is where your graphics card sits, where the PCI riser connects to it and it has a nice wide bay. Um, you can see in here that there are three slots. So you have up to a three slot graphics card. So it should be able to fit all the new modern cards, all the 30 series cards with pretty much no issue. One of the coolest features about this is the ability to remove the top panel. It's got push pins and you can just pop it off. You see some push pins there. And then you can actually flip the case, remove your power button. You can see on the bottom side, there's actually another cutout hole. So you could install everything from the top on the bottom, flip the orientation um, and have the power cords coming out of the top of the case. Um, falling out the back if that's what you wanted to do. It's just additional flexibility for users that want to customize their build. Accessory wise, there's not a ton included here, but everything you need to get started with the build is here. You will get four feet here, four rubber pads there, as well as enough screws to do any sort of system mounting that you would need to do. A power supply extension cable, uh, cover for one of your expansion slots in case you're only using a dual slot graphics card, and a cover for your power supply extension cable there. All right, so let's hop into an actual build in the SV540 and see how it performs. For this build, I'm gonna be using all the main components from my personal rig. So I have a point of reference and that's gonna be a 5900X for the CPU, a EVGA 3080XC3 for the GPU, a 600 watt Corsair SFX power supply, and an X570i ASUS ROG Strix motherboard right there. So we've got a pretty healthy selection of components there, pretty powerful components that should test out the system. Let's get started.
assembling the case was pretty simple. Everything went together nicely. It is well laid out. One thing I did notice, however, was that the CPU block on my NZXT Kraken X63 was slightly too tall for the case. It has a 55 millimeter clearance, and as you can see, the panel wouldn't close completely. You could close it, but there would be a noticeable bulge. So if you're using that cooler, you're going to have to switch to something else. I went with the Corsair H115i. Internally, there is space for all the cables. Everything is laid out really nicely. I did flip the power supply because I wanted to get some fresh air into it as opposed to the way that they recommend you install it. But either way worked for me just fine. On the other side of the case, you can see that there's plenty of room for that GPU to breathe. You have enough space to fit both a longer and taller graphics card as well as an additional slot. Looking at the system fully assembled, all I can think of is the word clean. It's really one of the cleanest, most minimal systems that I've built to date. And if you are into RGB or anything like that, because the vented side panels are so large, you can get a decent amount of glow coming out of them as well. While the bottom section does make the case taller, it's also the perfect length for bundling cables without bending them in awkward angles. This lets you have a clean profile on a desk better than pretty much any case I've seen. Temperatures are always a concern in ITX cases, and thankfully the SV540 does really well there. The large vented side panels and huge rear exhaust go a long way in getting hot air out of the case and cooling down those components. So at idle, I saw the GPU hitting around 44C, so nothing crazy there. Under gaming load, it hit up to 78C, and keep in mind, this isn't the biggest, beefiest cooler. This is a more compact 3080. And then under a full 100% load with Furmark, it only hit 81C. So GPU temperatures are well under control. If you use a bigger GPU with a more beefy three-slot cooling solution, you'll be in even better shape. As for the CPU, we saw similarly good performance there. Under idle, we were hitting around 38C, which for 5900X is pretty good. Under a gaming load, we we're only in the high 60s. Again, very good there. And even under a full artificial load at 100%, we still were only in the 70s, which for 5900X is very good. So overall, I was very pleased with the cooling performance of the case. I did notice that when you're running a game for a long time, the top of the case definitely does get warm. Uh, but like, unlike a lot of the cases, ITX cases that get heat soaked, this didn't appear to have an impact on overall performance over time. I was able to run the system indefinitely and the tape temperature stabilized at what you saw in the charts. I would love to see a version of this case in the future where the top panel also has ventilation similar to the side panels that would completely eliminate any standing heat that gets trapped in the case. Acoustics can also be a problem in compact ITX cases due to the large vented side panels and the back panel being essentially open outside of the radiator covering it, this case is going to be as loud or as quiet as the components you put inside of it. So we're gonna take a test and listen to the case at idle and then also while gaming. So as you heard, I found the noise levels to be completely manageable. I believe that those two 140 millimeter fans do a good job exhausting heat from both the GPU and obviously the CPU, which keeps thermals down. The fans don't have to ramp up quite as crazily loud as they might in some different type cases. Overall, I really, really like this case. It's quickly become one of my favorite ITX cases of all time. From its looks, the slim profile on top of a desk that takes up a minimal amount of space, to its performance, which can handle high-end GPUs and high-end CPUs, it really is a tough package to beat. Now, all this performance will cost you. It comes in at around $250, so it's definitely not a cheap case, but as you saw, you get a lot for that money, and there's really a package when you factor in the color options that you can't really find anywhere else. The only case that I could see potentially beating out the 540 may be the Meshalicious, which I will be reviewing shortly. The issue with that case is this one just looks better. I think the 540 just looks a lot better than that, and it's a little more narrow, so depending on your desk setup, this one might look better as well. So if you wanna pick one up for yourself, you can find links to the case as well as all the components I use today in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. I'm Jay, I'll see you next time. Thank you.